Stars are the engines of change in the universe. They take the simple elements, hydrogen and helium, and fuse them together to make heavier elements, like oxygen and iron. And those are the heavy, complex elements that we need for complex life to exist in the universe. Sunlight and starlight are just a byproduct of these fusion reactions. They're the waste energy that's created in the fusion. A key part of the story of understanding stars for me is that most stars are not like our sun. They're not on their own. They're actually in binary star systems where you have two stars that are locked together and they're orbiting around each other. This means they can lead really hectic lifestyles because as stars age, they get bigger and they can actually get in each other's way. And as they get in each other's way, they can exchange mass, which means one can get more massive, one can get less massive or in extreme cases they can merge together and form a kind of superstar that was going to have a really interesting explosion when it dies. A lot of the elements in our universe are made in supernovae, which are explosions when the stars die. Oxygen comes from massive stars when they die in the supernova, whereas most of the iron in the universe comes from stars like our sun, but only if they're in a binary star system. If our sun was in a binary star system, it would eventually become a type of star called a white dwarf. And if it then interacts with the other star and reaches something we call the Chandrasekhar mass, it would then explode and the entire star would become iron. And iron is really important because it takes the oxygen we breathe around our body and allowing us to be alive. And so we can actually trace how the two most abundant elements in the universe come from either these core collapse supernovae or from these binary star systems in these type 1a supernovae. Binary star systems are also responsible for some of the rarer elements in the universe. Why do they make different elements in different amounts? Why are oxygen and iron so abundant, but maybe things like gold, silver, platinum, all so rare? Somehow that must link back to how those stars actually go through their lives. Since 2015, we've had a new window on the universe to study these type of mergers. Neutron stars are so massive and so tiny that when they get very close together, they really warp space-time and they warp the universe. And they send out waves, just like there you are know, waves on a pond when you throw a stone into it. And we can now detect, via two observatories in America and one in Europe, we can actually detect those ripples in space-time. So this is really interesting because while we can detect the neutron stars merging, we can also detect things like black holes, which are another type of stellar remnant which we can't see with light. So one of the key reasons I like studying stars is that question of change, that question of creation, because we want to know where we came from. It's a very human question to say, why are we here? And studying astrophysics is one of the ways of doing that. And because stars make the materials that make us, answering and understanding stars is a way to understand ourselves. I don't go and observe stars in a telescope. I make computer models of those stars and try and take them as close to observations as I can do. You want to have a synthetic universe that you can observe and then compare to the real one because if you put all your physics into your computer program then you know that your a your computer programming is correct but also your physics is correct this is useful because it means we're making a bigger computer toolbox of how to solve some of the most difficult problems in the universe in developing our computer toolbox to solve problems we have a much bigger computer toolbox to solve all the more pressing problems we have on our own blue green planet we call home